Well, first and foremost, Coach, you talked on the teleconference about injuries. Tony Ogoli suffered a little bruised hip. You said he'll be okay. Uh, the one guy I was wondering about, Elijah Merchant, looked like he got a little dinged up on that hit he made at the end of the game. How, do, what do you think about his availability? Uh, we believe he'll be ready. He's going through the concussion protocol right now, so you know we'll just wait. But at this point, it looks like he's going to make it through the protocol. Okay. Uh, you're going down to South Florida. My father lives down there, and I go down to play golf, and it's hot as heck. i got to drink a ton of water. That should be an issue because we're a little cooler here in Annapolis this time of the year. <laughs> what do you do? I, I, you can't prepare your team for heat. What, what do you do to try to make sure that heat is not an issue down there? Well, we got to make sure we start hydrating, you know, the best we can. Uh, you know, we went to Tulane earlier in the year. Uh, obviously it was humid there, so we just got to do a great job of pushing the fluids because, like you said, we can't simulate the heat. It's starting to get cold up here, and um, you know, we had to wear this, mm -hmm. and um, we just got to push the fluids. Right. Um, we had talked a lot about the South Florida offense. Obviously, that's a big topic with the two guys they have. What are you seeing from them defensively? They got, look like they got a good group of uh, personnel over there on the defensive side? Uh, a lot of speed, you know, like they normally mean. Uh, Sanchez has been there a while. You know, at middle linebacker, you know, they got guys that played against us last year. But, you know, you look at them, they got speed, size, um, you know, and they've played some good people. Well, you mentioned size. I heard that these, and I haven't had a chance to really look at the numbers on the depth chart, but I heard they're very big in the trenches, offensive and defense. Is that true? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the bad thing about them for us is they're big up front and fast at the skill position. So they mm -hmm. got size and speed on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, in size and speed with good coaching is a bad recipe for the opponent and where their opponents this week. What, any thoughts as to what they might do defensively? I mean, last year you beat them. Do you think you're going to see a similar defensive game plan? Do you think that maybe they'll come up with something new this year? Yeah, we kind of try to look at what they did and their schematic way they lined up, you know. Um, so it kind of looked like, you know, guys that we played in the past, or maybe we try. We always try to troubleshoot whether it's seeing what people do against Georgia Tech mm -hmm. or against Army, and you know what they did was very similar to Duke. Mm -hmm. I mean, what Duke did against Army and Duke did against uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, and so they did similar things to us. So we imagine it's you know we got to get ready. So we've been watching a lot of you know Duke stuff. You know what they've done against Georgia Tech because uh, there's some similarities in philosophy. Um, we're going to ask you about. Um Bronson Kafusi has become a Navy fan. He is, uh, for those who don't know, he's a BYU graduate who's with the Ravens. He got injured. And I've seen him at a couple games with your wife. Can you talk about the relationship you've developed with Bronson? Well, Bronson uh, played at BYU uh, where my son Vaz at. Mm -hmm. And Bronson's younger brother, Corbin. He's still at BYU. He's still at BYU. And Va, my, you know, they're best of friends. So Val would always spend time at the Kofusi's house. You know, Steve Kofusi is the D he's line. A, he's a coach there, right? D line yep. coach, and so it was kind of like his uh, home away from home. And you know, they fed him on the weekends. And so you know, it's been great to have him because he's you know away from Provo. He and his wife Hillary. So it's been a great opportunity for my wife and I to be able to take care of him. Especially to he and his wife, it's a great time because he's been injured. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a football nut. He loves to come to games. Uh, you know, we're Excited for him and his future prospects, especially as he plays the Ravens. Is Bronson, I take it, is he Polynesian, Bronson? Is he yes. from Hawaii? Or? Uh, he's uh, Tongan. But okay. he grew up in, he grew up in uh, Utah. Mm -hmm. his, his dad is uh, Tongan descent and his mother is uh, Caucasian. Good kid? Great, great, great young man. <laughs> this past week, time after time after time, we were wowed in the press box by some of the blocks the slot backs delivered. I know you've had some good games blocking, but that might have been the best one I've seen. How did it rate out on film? Uh, we, we did okay. We did okay. okay. I, yeah, I, there I, some I, blow up blocks. <laughs> yeah, we, we we set the bar pretty high. Uh, so, I mean, we can always do better. Uh, I was proud of them. I was proud of the win. I mean, sometimes you gotta, you know, just find ways to win. We found a way to win. We dug down. Uh, I thought they played hard. Uh, we played a lot of guys. You know, um, so, you know. Guys stepped up. I thought they came in, you know, and played hard. Found a way to win. Anytime you can do that, you know, we're pleased with it. But obviously, there were some there were some mistakes when we went through the tape, and mm -hmm. we went through it yesterday, and got a lot of them corrected. So, you know, just trying to find a way to win this one this week. Well, there is a way to tabulate this. How many knockdowns did the slots get credited for? We had we had a couple. We had a couple. 
Um, I, had I, don't, been in I don't know. Eight. It was more than that. It was more than okay. that. Yeah, we had we had quite a few. I think it was 14 or something. So mm -hmm. um, no, that's, a, that's a good game for us. That's kind of what what we want. I mean, we want to, you know, there was a couple more out there that we could have that we could have got to. So um, unfortunately for those guys, I don't I don't keep the foot off of them too much. So, right. but you know, at, at the end of the year, we'll count up you know how many we did and, and see how well we played. But but right now we're just kind of in the middle of it, and we didn't have time to. Right. Time to go back and, and, and pat ourselves on the back. So we just, you know, we're on to on to South Florida. See how it goes this week. So, how do, how do you teach the techniques? Because you're talking about guys that were running backs in high school, maybe yeah. slots of some sort. How do you teach this skill? Because they come in here probably with really yeah. no understanding of how to block, yeah. and now all of a sudden in their role, they're yeah. delivering crucial blocks that cannot be missed, or else their buddy is going to get blown up. What is, you know, without going into too much detail, how do you teach these guys how to, to block the way you need them to? Uh, I think it's I think it's pretty simple. I mean, I, I think there's sometimes you can overcoach it. A lot of it's just want to. you got to want to block. you got to want to be physical. Um, if you don't, then you're not going to play. So a lot of those guys figured out early on, hey, I better, I better block or I'm not going to play. So mm -hmm. they figure out ways, you know, to, to get better at it. And, and obviously we practice at it and we spend a ton of time, you know, working technique and stuff. But I think... You know, it's it has very little to do with technique, very little to do with any of that. It's it's a lot of want to and a lot of just mindset, and being physical and making up your mind you're gonna go do it. And sometimes they're not pretty. Sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's not how you draw it up. But if you can get the block, you know, sometimes, you know, guys, you know, it, it, over the course of the game, you know, guys get in a rhythm and they and they get better at it. But you know, for us, I think it's just, you know, the. The, the group, the culture of the group. I mean, the guy catching the pitch has the guy sitting next to him right in the meeting blocking for him, right? right. So <laughs> that guy better block for him or he's right. going to get smacked in the head, you know? But, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's fun. And they take a lot of pride in it. And if they don't block very well, they hear about it in the meeting room from, you know, more from, you know, from the players themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they hear it from me too. But, but uh, you know, if, they, if they're not doing their job and not taking care of their business, then, and uh, like I said, they they, they kind of rib each other and make sure they that they push each other to get better. But but it's just a lot of effort, a lot of want to. All right, thank you. All of us in the press box were amazed with some of the awesome blocks delivered by the slots, and then Coach Work says it was okay. Uh, I guess it's a high bar around here, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Coach O'Rourke makes sure the bar is really, really high as far as cut blocking goes because, I mean, that could be a difference from a big play to a loss. Mm -hmm. So, so I mean, obviously, uh, I know he probably gets in the film room and he spends more time talking about the one block that was missed as opposed to the 14 that caused the knockdown, huh? <laughs> Definitely. He uh, just want to emphasize that the importance of cut blocking and uh, just doing our job in general. So when you got here, I mean, I'm, I don't know how much blocking you did in high school. Uh, would that be very little? <laughs> yes, uh, I really did not do much blocking right. in high school. I can't remember uh, me actually having to block that much. But once I got here and a lot of the older guys just said, once you learn how to block, everything else uh, fall into place. So mm -hmm. you spend most of your time your first year, especially at NAPS and uh, when you get here, learning how to cut block. So. So is there a guy that maybe you watched on film from the past or perhaps was here while you were here that kind of you thought, now that's how slot back blocks or the effort. I mean, Zerb Singleton is often held up as the ultimate slot back blocker because that guy poured his heart and soul into that particular job. I mean, he would crawl across the field to get a block, and I saw him do it. Yes, Zerb, uh, I haven't seen too many uh, clips of him, but I definitely heard he, uh, he was a really good uh blocker but um i would have to say uh bo bo snelson snelson bo yeah snelson. he was a good one too. he, he definitely good and uh john howe bo snelson mm -hmm. and john howe i guess that was like my era when i uh came in mm -hmm. we watch a lot of film on them and they they're very very physical uh with the cut block so we watch a lot of their film All right so we're sitting here watching you on film and you're not the biggest guy how do you you block a guy who's way bigger than you. I think coach said it, uh, it's want to. I, I want to be a better blocker so my brothers can run the ball, you know, whether it's the quarterback or the A-back. Just knowing that they will succeed and with my block, that just makes me want to do it even uh, more and even better. All right, so. thanks. We're talking slot back blocking and again, we thought that was a great performance and coach did finally admit there was 14 knockdowns. That's pretty high out of one unit. Um, 
talk a little about I mean, you came in here and you want to run and be pretty and you know handle the ball and when they sell it to you Dyson first thing you got to do is learn how to block what did you say for me uh I knew I had to come in and know how to block and it was I was familiar with it because I blocked in high school you did uh, okay pass blocking and run blocking at times because mm -hmm. um, I split crates with a, another slot back my junior and senior year so I was familiar with it so adjusting to the blocking wasn't my issue my issue was learning the plays mm -hmm. okay there's definitely this offense you have to not a block so what is the technique because I mean again I mean they're they're asking you to deliver <laughs> crucial blocks uh, and it, it's probably a big technique issue do you all spend a lot of time learning exactly how to deliver the block that's gonna you know in the in the beginning of the season a, a lot of it is technique but when you get down to it and you're in the game situation I say maybe 30% of it is technique. The other 70% is just will and want to, and you have to go uh, engage the defender with without any fear. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, there's been times when the slot did miss the block, and his buddy got blown up because there, <laughs> if you miss that block, that's the guy that's probably going to crush your buddy. Right. What is there pressure on in that regard? And I mean, if you're the one that causes the other slot to get crushed. <laughs> Uh, I, I say it's uh, it's pressure, but in a sense, you just go out there and you do it. Yeah, we love to be in that position. We want to play, we want to be on the field. We know that we take the risk of potentially messing up, but we practice it day in and day out. So we're confident when we're in those positions, in those situations, we're confident enough to know that there's a good chance that we won't mess up, that we will make that block. So you and Antonio are the veterans, and Calvin, of course, but you got a lot of young guys in this group that are starting to play more. The Walker brothers, the Brown brothers. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, how do you? They're not brothers. Yeah, they're not brothers actually, <laughs> but they're, they have the same last name. That's right. Uh, how do you impart the importance of blocking? Because coach said it. You're not going to get on the field here as a slot back if you right. don't block well. And there's probably some guys that had ability to handle the ball and run that didn't get in games because they didn't block. Right. Uh, my thing is, and same thing with Tonio, is uh, we lead from the front. Um, so we set the example, we set the tempo in practice uh, and in games. They see us going out there and blocking guys, guys who are bigger than us. You know, it doesn't really matter the size. Um, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. I feel like that resonates a lot with the A-backs here. Uh, when you watch film, you see how often we block. And it could be linebackers, it could be secondary guys. It really doesn't matter. We just set the tempo. Okay. All right, great.